Hey, Ace Trick students, Mr. Meunier back. Um, Going to finish up our vector unit here with this lesson today. Uh, this is section 9.7 in your textbook, uh, going over what's called the cross product for vectors. Again, this is the cross product for vectors. This is the last uh, topic to cover before uh, we end what we're going to do with vectors this year. You will have a test on Friday covering uh, what we've done since spring break, our, covering our vectors. And uh, we'll talk more about that uh, later on this week. Uh, first off, with the cross product, this is not like the dot product we did last week. Uh, the dot product, the solution was a number, and that number helped us learn specifically about angles uh, related to a pair of vectors. Cross product, right now, I'll just say the solution is a vector. Uh, and it, it does have an important property we'll get to later on. But uh, again, the solution is a vector when it comes to a cross product. Um, dot product, we put a, literally put a dot between two vectors. So for instance, it was u dot v cross product. Uh, we put an x, so u for lack of a better term, times V. That's how you tell the difference in symbolism between a cross product problem and a dot product problem. So I know these in arithmetic both mean to multiply, but when it comes to vectors, the dot and the X mean two completely different um, calculations we work through. Now to find a cross product, we have to remember uh, something called a determinant with matrices. Uh, a determinant is just a number associated with a square matrix. A uh, number from matrix. That's all a determinant is. You would have talked about this in college algebra last year. Um, you're not going to be tested on determinants, but we got to know how to do it. So real quick, if I have what's called a two by two matrix here, meaning I have two rows and two columns, you find the determinant by multiplying down the first diagonal. So I'm going to take, whoops, not that. I'm going to take negative one multiplied by the positive one. And it's always a subtraction sign. And I multiply up the other diagonal. Six times four. So again, we have a negative one times one, always a subtraction and then six times the four. That gives you a negative one minus a 24, which is a negative 25. That is the determinant of this two by two matrix. Um, if you had a larger, what's called a three by three matrix here, you would have learned a couple of ways of doing this in college algebra, most likely. Uh, one way involved taking the first two columns and rewriting them outside and then multiplying down the diagonal and then multiply up diagonals. That isn't a great way of doing it here. The better way is something called expansion by minors, where on this method, you take this first piece, which happens to be the letter A here, we write that, and then you multiply by the determinant of this two by two squared. So basically, do not use the things under the A or next to the A. So that piece would be just like we had done in the previous example, multiply down the diagonal. So that's two times a one, always a subtraction, multiply up the diagonal, two times the three. That takes care of the first part. Then I move on to the B. And this is where you gotta remember, it's always A, normal, subtract B. Just like here, it's always normal, subtraction. Subtract the B, and I worry about the pieces not under the B. So imagine the two, one and four, and the two, three and one. So don't use the things next to the letter or under that letter. And we do a two by two with those. So it's going to be the one times the one. Always subtract. And then the four times the three. 
And then I move on and we do the C piece. Now it's gonna be plus. So positive A minus the B plus the C. And I'm gonna do the items not underneath the B. It's a little messy when you have all three of these. I'm trying to color code it a little bit, but hopefully you're understanding that we don't use the, the, the pieces next to C or the pieces below C. Worry about the one, the four, the two, and the two that are not in contact with C. And with these, we do the same routine. Multiply down the diagonal. One times two, always subtract. Multiply up the diagonal, four times two. If I clean all of these up now, we're going to have this A. Uh, that's 2 minus a 6. Subtract a B, 1 minus 12. Add a C, 2 minus 8. Uh, 2 minus 6 is a negative 4A. 1 minus 12 is negative 11. The negative 11 with the negative B makes a positive 11B, because again, two negatives make a positive. Two minus eight is a negative six. With the positive C, it makes a minus six C. And for our case here, that would be your determinant. Uh, last year, typically, you would have some type of number for A, B, and C that you would multiply and then add and subtract all those pieces together. But that's not needed here because of how we're going to do our cross products moving forward. All right, so moving on. That's just determinants. And that's important now because you find the cross product of vectors by literally doing the three by three determinant of those vectors. We're gonna run through those here. So if I have vector V, 2i minus 3j minus 2k, and again, these are vectors because I have i, j, and k, that means I'm gonna move two units horizontally, down three units vertically, uh, backwards two units in that third dimension. Uh, for, for V, W means four units horizontally, down one vertically, and then forward five units in that third dimension of K. Uh, if I want to do V cross W, I'm going to set up that three by three matrix, but then now I'm going to put I, J, and K across the first row. V comes first. I'm gonna fill in the coefficients of two, negative three, negative two. W comes next, coefficients of four, negative one, and positive five. And I'm gonna work out the determinant that we discussed a moment ago. So I'm gonna put the I out in front, and then I'm gonna ignore what is next to I and what is below I and focus on negative three, negative two, negative one, and five. I'm gonna kind of skip some steps here and say negative three times five is a negative 15. Subtract always, negative one times negative two is a positive two. It's always I and then subtraction J. Ignore what's next to J and what's under J. So the two and the five, Make a 10, subtract four and negative two is a negative eight. So we have 10 minus negative eight, and then plus the K. Ignore what's next to it and what's under it. So two and negative one is a negative two. Whoopsie. Don't want that parenthesis. And four and negative three is a negative 12. So negative two, subtract negative 12. If I clean this up, negative 15 minus 2 is negative 17i. 10 minus negative 8 is positive 18. So positive 18 with the minus makes a minus 18j. Negative 2 minus negative 12 is a positive 10 with the positive makes a positive 10k. So this vector is the solution to our cross product of V cross W. Notice this is not a number like the dot product. This is another vector. It's a separate vector answer. All right, so that is example A, V cross W. Uh, example B looks like very similar, W cross V. 
uh, with the dot product before, order didn't matter, and we'll see order does matter with the cross product here. So I, J, K, this time W comes first. So it's four, negative one, positive five, and the V comes second, two, negative three, negative two. Um, I, ignore next to it and under it. So negative one and negative two is a positive two. Subtract negative three and positive five is a negative 15. Always a minus sign, J. Ignore what's next to it and what's under the J. Four and negative two is a negative eight. Uh, two and five would be subtract always, and that's a positive 10. And then plus the K piece, ignore what's next to it and what's under it. Four and negative three is a negative 12. And then again, it's subtract two and negative one is a negative two. We clean that one up. Two minus negative 15 is a positive 17 I. Uh, negative 8 minus 10 is a negative 18. Negative 18 with the negative sign makes a positive 18J. And negative 12 minus negative 2 is a negative 10 with the positive sign makes a minus 10K. So W cross V is 17I plus 18J minus 10K. Uh, order does matter with cross products, but notice they are similar. Uh, these two vectors are opposite of each other. So that can save some time. For instance, if you can just remember, if you remember that, if you're asked to do V cross W, you get an answer, then you have W cross V. I don't have to do all the work again. I just need to change the signs because an opposite vector means you have changed all the signs. It goes the opposite direction in every way. And last but not least, crossing a vector with itself is also possible and it will give a unique solution. So I, J, and K. Uh, v is two, negative three, negative two, and then V again is two, negative three, negative two. Uh, I goes out in front, speeding this up, ignore underneath it and next to it, negative three and negative two is a positive six, always subtract, negative three and negative two is a positive six, minus sign always, J, ignore what's under J, what's next to J, so two and negative two is a negative four, minus, two and negative two is a negative four. Always add the K piece, ignore what's under it and next to it. So two and negative three is a negative six. Subtract two and negative three is a negative six. Six minus six is zero I, minus negative four minus negative four is zero J, plus negative six minus negative six is zero K. Zero, zero, zero gives you what's called the zero vector. That's possible. Zero vector is just a dot. It is a point in space. So this time we got a number. The number is zero. That is a vector. It's a point vector. It doesn't have any direction or magnitude to it. That happens anytime you cross a vector with itself. All right. So properties up here. We just said if you cross a vector with itself, you get zero. If you change the order of crossing vectors, it just makes it the opposite. It makes it negative of what you had. You can do some distribute and some scalars with cross products as well. Now, as far as definitions, what this is important for, things you guys need to know for your test, or you know, when you come out of our class and move on, big things from this that I had to use in my college math classes, is this answer, U cross V, it's orthogonal to both U and V. And again, orthogonal means perpendicular. Um, 
another big deal, U cross V is the area of a parallelogram as adjacent sides of U and V. And if U cross V is zero, that means U and V are parallel to each other. If dot product said from last week, if the dot product is zero, you're orthogonal. If the cross product is zero, you are parallel. Um, so what is this saying? What's this U cross V orthogonal to both mean? Well, I mean, if we had a vector U, yeah, let's not do that. Let's say you had vector U coming like this and vector V like this, two vectors, U cross V would be that vector. Imagine a vector going up or down through the edge of it. It's almost like a, like a table where U and V is the top of the table and U cross V, that's the leg going up and down through the table. That's what your cross product is. It's the answer that's orthogonal to both. It's like the leg on a table. Uh, the parallelogram idea is kind of this. So if you have U and V, if you make a parallelogram out of U and V, that parallelogram I just kind of made in blue here, the area of that parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product. Area of the parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product. All right, so we'll hit both of those ideas here. Um, find a vector that's orthogonal to U. 4i minus, there should be a j on that. That's a definite mistake. 4i minus 3j plus 2k. And vector V, negative i plus 2j minus 4k. So a vector that's orthogonal to both of them, we need to find the cross product. So without coming out and saying it, we need to do that here. Find the cross product. We've already done a few of them, so I'm going to go a little bit quicker now. I, J, K. Uh, U is 4, negative 3, and 2. V is negative 1, 2, negative 4. Cross product. I. Ignore what's under it and next to it. Negative 3 and negative 4 is a 12. Subtract 2 and 2 is 4. Always a minus. J. Ignore what's next to it and what's under it. 4 and negative 4 is a negative 16. Subtract negative 1 and 2 is a negative 2. Plus the K. Ignore what's next to it and what's under it. 4 and 2 is an 8. Subtract negative 1 and negative 3 is a 3. Whoops. That's going to give us 8i, uh, negative 16 minus negative 2. That's going to be a negative 14. And the negative sign makes a plus 14j. 8 minus 3 is a 5k. 8i plus 14j plus 5k. Make sure I didn't make an arithmetic mistake on that. Nope. So this vector is orthogonal to both U and V. Again, for lack of a better term, we just found for just making this up, if that's vector U and that's vector V, U cross V, what we just found is a vector that's coming perpendicular to each of these. So maybe this is U cross V going up and maybe V cross U, the opposite is the one that's moving down. But it's like the, the edge of a table coming up and down through. And then let's add one little piece onto this that I should have, it's in the note key. Example, find area of parallelogram um, 
we'll just shorten it up by say bounded by u and v. Got a little bit clearer. So if we have vector u, which I just made up here, and vector v, you could make a parallelogram out of those two, which I'm doing in green right now. The area of that parallelogram can always be found by taking the magnitude of our cross product. So the area is going to be the magnitude of u cross v. And we've said for a couple weeks now, the magnitude of a vector, the size of that vector, is you take each component squared, sum them, take the radical of that. So it's going to be big radical, 8 squared plus 14 squared plus 5 squared. And I pull the calculator up. Uh, radical, eight squared, whoops, eight squared plus 14 squared plus five squared. Um, let me take that decimal out. It's going to give us, crud. Eight squared plus 14 squared plus five squared. Get a radical 285 as a radical, um, as a decimal, that's approximately 16.9. Again, that's about 16.9 square units. So the size of this parallelogram in green for the made up U and V vector, that's not to scale or any dimension would be about 16.9 square units. All right, guys, hope that makes some sense. If not, you know, uh, give me some questions in Schoology. I'm happy to uh, respond and get back to you. Um, to cover this, I've made an a little uh, true-false multiple choice assignment in Schoology. It's labeled as section 9.7, cross product homework. Uh, submit that in Schoology, section 9.7, the cross product. Homework, uh, we need to submit that in Schoology by 11 a.m. Wednesday. Again, that's a completion grade to see how we're doing. Wednesday, you'll have some review problems to do. Um, reach out to me for, for help. And Friday will be a test over uh, vectors. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, again, don't hesitate to ask me questions um, later.